Hey guys, I'm at one of my suppliers, actually United Refrigeration, and the representative from Inficon is here, and I have this new Inficon Detect Stratus that I've never used. I've never even really taken it out of the box. I pulled it out to bring it in here and let him go through it. And I've got some questions for him that y'all may find interesting, and I'll see if he'll let me record. So stay tuned. I'll try it. How's it going? How's it going? What's your name? Sean. I'm Curtis. Curtis, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I heard you were here. This is my... Detect Stratus. Sweet. How's it treating you? I don't know. I haven't used it. Oh, all right then. Uh, how much do you know about it? I had one in the past and I had, um, you don't mind if I record you, do you? No, you're okay. That's fine. Uh, I had one in the past and, um, I had difficulties with it. Okay. So, Anything particular or? Um, sensor went bad. Okay. After very few hours of use okay um were you able to get that replaced or? got it replaced okay good got it, they actually took one out of a different leak detector okay ordered a new one put it in there used it for just a little while longer i'm gonna say just a couple months mm -hmm. and sensor went bad again and the air pump went bad at the same time mm, you got a stroke of bad luck there so um okay that one was destroyed. This is a new one. I have okay. not used it. I, I've kind of lost them. Um, a little bit of faith. A little bit, <laughs> little bit of faith in them. Okay, yeah. So um, I was going to ask you some questions while sure. while I got you here. Um, yeah, sure. Basically about maybe proper care. Absolutely. How to take care of the sensor. Mm -hmm. Um, things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Sounds good. Well, let's get started. Um, I'm just going to take a look at the year. So we do these test and tunes. Um, like you can bring in your leak detector and stuff like that. First thing I do is always check kind of the date code on it. So it's a newer one, so 2023. So just this past year. The sensor on this as well it is new as well, so 2023. So these are brand new units. Before I turn it on, first thing I'll do is go and look at the filter. So I take this cap off. Now that filter, you can look right there. You'll see it's nice and white, it's clean. Um, if you're looking at it uh, after some good use, and it looks more like salt and pepper or it starts to get brown you see specks in there um that's just a visual inspection you go ahead and switch it out it will that keep water from getting in it it will keep water from getting in it yes so and what it is what happens if you just suck up too much water is it going to kill it? it it can yes so that is a hydrophobic filter so if you break that down hydro means water phobic repel uh -huh. okay so it will keep any water from getting in there if you're working in rain or if you're in a mist of any sort like that now, if you're sticking this in a puddle and it's going through it, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Well, um, sometimes that happens. So, sometimes it happens. In the bottom of an evaporator coil sometimes. Or... Sometimes it happens. And if you know that it does happen, what we recommend, you, know, you can either turn it off right away, let gravity do its trick, hold it upside down, take your cap right, off, Thank you, man. take out the filter, wick out your cap, slide a new filter in there. Okay. And then, and then you'll be good to go. You should be fine. But if water does get in there, you know, it happens, you know, things, things happen. It, it can, it can kill the unit because what, what will happen is water will get in here. It'll get into your sensor. It can destroy the sensor. Okay. Okay. So we, that's why we always recommend make sure you have a filter on. There. Like when I'm, when my sensor and the pump went bad, mm -hmm. I thought maybe that's what happened. Oh, I got, okay. I got water in it. Okay. There's a possibility. I didn't remember doing that, mm -hmm. but, um, I didn't know. I thought maybe I killed it, but I didn't remember actually doing it, so I was a little upset with it about mm -hmm. the it dying on me. Mm -hmm. But um, maybe that's what it was. Okay, gotcha. gotcha. <laughs> that that is a possibility. Um, but you know, you got a new one now, so hopefully we won't have to deal with that again. Turn it on here. Let the coffee kind of joke. Let the coffee warm up. Uh huh. Um, and I, what I will tell you is, there's three different sensors. Do you know about the different sensors that are compatible with this unit? I know you got one for combustible gas, mm -hmm. um, refrigerant, and there's there's another one, right? CO2. CO2. Yeah. Yep. So the way these work, so your standard refrigerants, 
Um, this is your standard refrigerant sensor, so R22, 1234IF, 410, anything is like it that. Compatible with these new A2Ls? Yes. All of our units have been A2L certified since 2016. Okay. So uh, your flammables, R290, R600. This one won't do natural gas. That's the only thing about it. It won't do natural gas. Really? Yes. It is not certified intrinsically safe, so it will not do natural gas. And then this one will do your CO2. So you can go from one to the next to the next without having to switch out different units. The way that works, and while yours is still heating up, actually yours is ready, I'll show you on our other unit. You just push your back button in, door comes out. You'll see your cell, uh, battery cell right there, and that little tab is your sensor. You give that a little tug. You can see on this unit, the DTEC-3, I have my flammable sensor in. Same sensors. Though. Same sensors. So same sensors at Stratus. So if you're working on a 290 job and your next job is CO2, great. You take your CO2 sensor in and you just slide it right in there and push it in. I see. And this unit will actually tell you which unit you have, which, or excuse me, which sensor you have in. They'll give you a little indicator just to the left of your volume uh, icon okay. right there. And I'll actually show you with the ones that I have once I kind of show you how this works after the fact. All right. So there's three modes with this. There's cloud hunting mode, which shows here. Now, if you walk into a rack room or a cooler that's been leaking like a sieve, you got refrigerant everywhere. Any normal leak detector just kind of goes off, up, down, left, right. You don't know where your leak is. Uh -huh. You kind of leak checking everywhere. What this will do is it'll give you a number in PPM or parts per million of how much refrigerant it's picking up. The higher the number, the closer you are to your leak. Kind of like a game of hot and cold with a number. I see, yeah. So what I actually have is a five gram leak inside this compartment here. And there's three different chambers. So I'm gonna put my probe into here and the closer I get to my leak, the higher that number will go. So you say, I just put in that first compartment, you see that number go up. Now you don't have to push any buttons here. It's just uh, click, just let it run. If you do hit anything, if you do hit that sensor zero button, the only thing that comes up is a maximum value. That's it. And that's just as a reference. Um, you don't have to. Now, as I get closer to my leak, you'll see those numbers begin to continue to go up. Now I'm in my second compartment. And again, I'll just leave it there. You know, once it hits a certain concentration, whatever it is, it should hold right around there. Looks like it's staying right around, you know, 107, 108. Maybe it'll get up to 110. Now, as I go closer, now where I'm actually at my leak, this is where you'll get your highest reading. And as I pull away from that leak, you'll see those numbers begin to drop. And now I'm gonna pull it completely out into clean air. And you give it a little bit of time, depending on how high your uh, reading is, you know, about five seconds or so, goes right back down to zero. So the zero sensor button just gives you a max. Yes, the zero sensor button in cloud hunting mode just gives you a maximum reading. That's okay. It. All the time I used it, I didn't know it did that. Yes. Yeah. The zero sensor button uh, just gives you a maximum reading when in cloud hunting mode. There is a different mode called manual mode, which I'll get into here in a second. Okay. okay. So now you've gone through, you've leak checked everything, and you realize, you know, you, you've kind of found your culprit. You have an area where you're getting your highest concentration of PPMs. Now you could switch your mode. Now you're in pinpoint mode. Yes. Now this is what you can use to get down and actually find exactly where your leak is. So I have another five gram leak right through here. And this is where you can go through and you can just sniff just like normal. And this is how it will alarm. All right, in this mode, does it auto zero at all? Yes, it does actually. So if I actually put this leak right on here, it's not gonna continuously alarm. Because what it's doing is it's constantly looking for a higher concentration of refrigerant. So if I hold it on here, nothing's going to happen. Okay. But now if I pull it off and put it back on, you'll see just how quickly this thing auto zero, this unit auto zero. It's auto zero and really fast. Immediately, yes. But if I sit there and hold it on there, it's still looking for a higher concentration. If I pull it off, put it back on, boom. Well, it, wow. What this does, this is this this definitely helps for any false alarms that you might have. It helps to cut those down. I see. Okay, and then there's different sensitivity levels that you can get with this. So right now we're on super, so highest sensitivity. If you hit that sensor zero button on this time, you're changing your sensitivity levels. So it goes from super to high to medium to low. What that helps, obviously, you know, if you have a super high concentration and it's just kind of going off, you know, everywhere, you can lower that sensitivity, yes. which requires a higher concentration of refrigerant. So you, it'll require you to be basically right on top of your leak yes. to get it. Um, and then the third mode on here 
is what we call manual zero. So manual zero, the way that works is if you walk into, you know, um, uh, a smaller room or anything like that, where even on your PPM mode, it's maxed out. You know, it's reading 9,999. You go left, right, it's just absolutely maxed out. This helps because it doesn't matter what the concentration is. What its baseline is and what it's reading are both, we'll say, zero. Now, as you walk in and you start to pick up refrigerant, it'll, it'll start to alarm. You'll hit that sensor zero button and it'll take its baseline and move it up to here. Now it's only going to alarm if it reads something higher. And I'll let you demonstrate that with this right here. So right now we're in clean air and we're in manual mode. So I'll hit that sensor zero button and you'll see it's zeroing. So it's zeroed into clean air. Okay. So now I'm going to go again and put my probe into this compartment and you'll see it begin to alarm. Now I want you to listen and actually view so you get a visual. As I get closer to my leak, you'll really see that visual increase. And now I'm going to zero it out. Now as I pull away from it, so it's zeroed out to the second compartment now. As I pull away from my leak, listen what happens. So the beeping stays, continues to get faster. If you, you get, get closer. closer, but now as I pull away, you see how much slower that beeping has got. Yeah. If I get closer to my leak now, you hear that beeping get faster and you get that visual. So now I'm at my highest concentration. I'll zero out to there. And as I pull away even further now, you slow see how down slow again. down you get. So you know you're getting further away from your, from where your leak actually is. Now I'm back into clean air. I can zero out to here, and there you go. There we go. And there you go. There's your, and then you can go back to your PPM mode, your cloud hunting mode. Um, I like that's kind of having the max. Yes, that um, maximum. It's it's a very nice reference point. You know, if you're going through leaking everything, it's almost a reminder. Hey, I have a maximum value of you know 165 over by this unit. Let me go check everything else. How do you clear that? You just hit it again. So hit it again, and then it goes back. Okay. So you hit the max zero to bring it up. Go through everything. Hit it again to to get rid of it. Hit it again to bring it back, and it will go back to zero. Okay. Now, are there any special instructions on caring for the sensor? Because literally, mine did not last very long at all. Yeah. Uh, Just don't let it get any moisture. Or really, there's no. You don't want any moisture to get into it because that can kill the sensor. Yep. Um, these sensors, all of them, whether you're using the standard refrigerant sensor, our hydrocarbon sensor, or our CO2 sensor, um, have a 2,000 hour lifespan, and they're like light bulbs. Okay, you wake up in the morning, you turn your bathroom light on, all your light bulbs are on. You wake up the next morning, you turn it on, one of them's burned out. So what do you do? You replace the bulb. You didn't see it dim, you didn't see it flicker. That's how these are gonna work. That last hour of detection is just as good as that first hour of detec detection. And this unit will actually tell you when your sensor has burned out. And I'll show you. So right it now- It has a red light. Yes, exactly. Yes, I've seen so the I red go light and, twice. I go and pull this, this sensor out. Now right here, I just pull the sensor out, it says sensor absent. Obviously we don't have a sensor in the unit, okay? This will read sensor fault when your sensor has burned out. Once I put this back in, you know, you can just go get a new sensor and then you're good to go. Okay, yeah, I've seen the screen of death a couple times. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, but this one looks good, so now if I take this one out again, okay, and I'll throw in my hydrocarbon sensor, so my flammable sensor, I'll put this guy in. And you'll see a little flame indicator up here at the top to the left of your volume bar. Uh -huh. That's how you know you have your flammable sensor in. So again, the R290, R600, you can go ahead but and use that with this. But natural gas. It won't use natural gas. No, if you want to use natural gas, we recommend you use a certified intrinsically safe leak detector. And that would be our gas meter. Um, I've got one. Oh, perfect. Perfect, yeah. That's, that's your safest bet. It doesn't create any heat. I actually have it right here. It doesn't create any heat, doesn't create any spark, everything, all the electronics are covered up. Um, I just use it so infrequently. I take the batteries out of it and... Yeah. Yeah, that helps with longevity of the unit, everything, yeah. Now, for sensors, there is no real care that you can take to make them last longer or anything like that. Um, what we do recommend, you know, I have I have a pretty expensive phone. And I bought a case for my phone. To, and my phone goes in my pocket or goes right next to my nightstand at night, okay? With these units, obviously, you get a nice sturdy case just like this. Uh -huh. So always make sure that at the end, whether you're walking up to a rooftop, 
you know, carry up the whole briefcase, then pull it out. You know, if if you're all done with your unit, make sure it gets put back in the case, and the case goes back in a nice safe place place in your truck. It's not getting rattled around in a bag or anything that can damage the unit and it can damage your sensors. And there are spots for all these sensors to fit inside of here. So if you have obviously your unit, go ahead and turn this off. What about extra batteries and because I have an extra sensor and an extra battery. Okay, yep. yep, we can change that and I'll show you how to do that too. So if you do have your you know your unit right in there, you can have a sensor in there. You can place sensors here and here. Yeah, and they won't, they won't right on. You can put extra slots for your batteries here or anything else. Obviously you're charging extra filters, your headphones, you have a, the car charger and then your wall charger, everything else is all right here. I see. So all that stuff fits right in here, nice and tight and snug. Um, but like I said, you know, make sure it goes back in the case and then the case goes back in your truck or anything else like that. That's what's gonna make this thing last forever. I always joke and say, if, if you come in, you know, when well, next time I see you and you have a box that's absolutely destroyed, but your unit looks nice and clean and fresh, I'll give you a new box. I don't care. I'll, gl I'll gladly trade you my clean box for your dirty box. It doesn't doesn't bug me at all. Um, but now for the batteries to change those, you're gonna do the same thing as you would the sensor. You're gonna push your back button where your back door comes off. That little black cell right there is your battery. There's a little gray tab. Just pull, push that to the side and your battery will slide out. Lithium ion battery. For this unit, you get eight to 10 hours on a full charge. Full charge you get, uh, takes right around two hours, okay? If you're using cloud hunting mode, it'll be closer to eight hours of use. If you're using your pinpoint mode, that's closer to 10 hours of use. Well, normally when I was using it, I would use them both. Yep, yeah, so you'll get right around eight to 10 hours. You know, obviously guys switch from one to the other. You'll get right around eight to 10 hours on a full charge. Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. oh, All right. Did you have any other questions or anything like that? No. Um, um, we do have, obviously, the interchangeable probe. I don't mean to cut you off or anything. Um, obviously, we have that extended probe, so you get that extra reach. So if you are working on any you know, rack room systems, you have that extra reach going out, so you don't have to kind of slick your way through. Um, yeah. I do recommend, though, if you are using the extended probe, as you're leak checking, go a little bit slower because it takes longer for that pump to get the refrigerant to go from the edge where the actual tip is into the system. So okay, if you're usually, yeah. we reckon, you know, if you're going at about an inch at a time, maybe three quarters of an inch at a time, just go that little bit slower so it gives it time for that unit to bring the refrigerant from all the way up there into the, into the actual unit mm -hmm. to alarm. Okay. But other than that, I don't. Do you have any other questions or anything like that? Um, your warranty program. Tell yes. me about your warranty program. Absolutely. Yep. So we have a two-year over-the-counter warranty on it. So if anything does happen um, where it is covered under warranty, you can bring it back to where your purchase uh, was made. They'll call up our facilities up in Syracuse, confirm that it is still under warranty. If whoever you purchase it from has another unit on the shelf, they'll take the one from the shelf, give it to you, and then you can head back out to work. I see. Um, and then what they'll do is they'll send us up the unit that was you know, broken or under warranty and we'll send them down a new one to replace their shelf life. So it gets you back out and into the field working faster. That's you don't great. have to kind of deal with us waiting on us to get your unit back. You can just go right back into the field. Okay. Well, I think that answers all my questions. Tell me your name again. Sean Burns. Sean. And then I have a, a card here too. I'll throw one just into here. If you have any questions or if you're using it and it's giving you any difficulties, feel free to give me a call. And if I can't help you over the phone, then I'll find someone who can. All right. Thank you. Thanks, I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Well, guys, that was interesting. It makes me want to go try to use this leak detector. It looks like that one is working good. I, um, I've kind of stayed away from it because I had a bad experience, but that may be a really solid leak detector. So... I'm going to give it a try, and if things work out, maybe I'll do another review like I did yesterday on that um, Fieldpiece DR58. I hope you enjoy these videos. I hope that one was informative. It was informative to me because he taught me a little something. Um, thanks for watching. If you like these videos, how about like and subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next one.